I promised a subscriber to explain how to edit macro PJ work. I use PJ a lot. The code shown here is a COBOL test program. Note the name of this member. That is short for Test COBOL 01. We want to run this program. PJ is on the command line. Press Enter. The name of this member is RunCBL01 or RunCobol01. This is the JCL to run the test COBOL program we were editing a few seconds ago. In this video, I explain how PJ works and how you can customize it. Welcome to Dinosaur Parkour. Faster, better, mainframe programming. I'm your host. Chris P. Fried. We were editing the COBOL source and PJ was entered on the command line. When PJ ran, it stacked an edit section to edit the JCL on top of it. At this point, the JCL can be tweaked, submitted, etc. When we are done, press PF3 to exit. I ask our edit returns back to the prior COBOL member. Pretty cool. However, there is a catch. This shows the member list for my primary library. Both the program source and the JCL for the program are in this library. FizzBuzz2 is the source and FizzBuj2 is the JCL for it. Test COBOL 01 and 02 at the bottom are the source members for two test programs. The JCL members are named RunCBL0102. If your preference is to have type specific libraries, PJ is not something you want to new. In other words, if you create a library for COBOL programs and only COBOL programs, do not use PJ because it creates the JCL member in the same PDF as the source member. Now, if you're still watching, it's time to discuss how PJ works. This is the strip for PJ. Line 14 handles the editing of a JCL member that starts with run. I start many of my test programs with TST. When PJ is invoked while editing a test program, the letters TST are replaced with run for the JCL member. This is a personal rec. Very personal. Line 14 needs to be tweaked to handle how you name test program. Line 9 throws an error if this macro is used in a non-edit session. It tells you to edit a member. The way the signal command is coded here makes it act like a go-to. Line 11 tells ISR edit to store the member name in a variable name MBR name. The personalization happens in the select statement. Anybody that wants to use this macro needs to tweak this logic. If the current member name is less than 8 characters, line 13 appends the letter J to the end of the member name. I try to name my batch retrocessed with seven or fewer characters to take advantage of that. Line 16, 17, and 18 handle member names that end with numbers. It overlays the character just prior to the numbers with the letter J. Only eight character member names make it to the otherwise clause because line 13 handles names with less than eight characters. Let's talk about line 21 first. At my prior shop, PJ changed the fourth letter to be a J. Per the naming standards of that shop, the fourth character indicated if the program was batch or online. Batch programs need test JCL, so PJ was overlaying the letter B for batch with the letter J for JCL. Being retired, I'm not beholden to existing naming standards. I decided to replace the first character with J as shown on line 20. I wanted to explain the difference 
to demonstrate how you might go about personalizing this exec for your situation. Here's another example. Say you're working on three subprograms for a run unit that creates ACH files, automated clearinghouse files to move money between banks. You can code the name to those three subprograms and use the same test JCL member. No matter which of the three programs you're editing, the same test member is brought up when PJ is new. And it does not have to be just program source member. Maybe it takes two jobs to test these programs. You can code PJ to bring up ACH test 2 if you're editing ACH test 1. Like I said, it is a very personal edit macro. For me, it made the switching from source code to test JCL faster. Line 24 throws an error if the generated JCL name is the same as the current member name. Line 25 issues the edit command on the new member name. Line 26 exits the strip. The completion code of 1 tells ISR edit to place the cursor on the command line. Line 16 through 18 invoke a user-defined function called num suffix. Line 33 names the function and procedure isolates it. It basically creates a bubble around this function. This function cannot act as variable defined in the calling part of the exact and the variables that num suffix creates are only known to it. Thus, the variables data, s length, and suffix can only be seen by this function. The purpose of this function is to check the last n positions of a member name to see if all of those characters are numeric. It returns a 1 if all the characters being tested are numeric, and 0 if not. I have pasted a copy of this rec in the comments of this video. Thank you for watching.